Hey, what is up, everybody? This is Ben, and this is episode 13 of the PB and Gains podcast. And today, what I want to talk about is is hunger, and it's a, a huge topic, and it's something that we get a lot of uh, requests to talk about is hunger and how to stop cravings and all this good stuff. And we'll get into that. And I want you guys to, when you walk out of here, or when you stop listening to the podcast, or when it finishes, I want you to have a better understanding of hunger, what it is, how to handle it, um, and how to just really truly understand it and its purpose. And before we do that, I want to kick off with a pretty sweet quote that I got from Mother Teresa um, when doing my search for the quote today. And it goes a little something like this. The hunger for love is much more difficult to remove than the hunger for bread. I said that's from Mother Teresa. And the reason why I picked that quote, and I want to explain this one today, is because uh, I think this is something that we confuse. And you know, from the authenticity aspect and that standpoint, I really want you guys to understand that most times when people are eating... When you're eating, when I'm eating, you know, it's it's to hide behind something, it's to cover something up. There's a reason that we're doing it. And so I really just want it to be something that you are conscious of and aware of. So many people use food to hide behind. They overeat. They become gluttonous. And um, a lot of times they don't realize the true issue. And it really stems from a deeper understanding of psychology. And so we're going to get into that today. And I'm going to touch on that. But I just wanted you guys to hear that quote. It really spoke out to me when I uh, was searching. So getting into the podcast today talking about hunger we are on episode 13 so like i said thank you guys for following us along um quick hit from me this has been if you haven't heard the podcast before uh, my name is ben mcmillan i am the lifestyle engineer here at avenue fitness and i we started this podcast david and myself and really trying to, to kick off a, a different kind of conversation about health and wellness and what it really means to be we be excellent in that field because it has so many different meanings and there's so many people out there talking about it. We wanted to hit on it in a different way um, with a deeper understanding of self and really starting there. So that is what the podcast is about and hunger is a huge aspect of that. So uh, let's get into it. Um, some of the information I got here is it's been pretty interesting. Uh, I got it from a couple different studies. Um, the source from Doreen Virtue, the Constant Craving A to Z study. Um, also from the book uh, by the People's Chemist, which I really wish I could say this <laughs> and not have it be something to where it gets me in trouble, but the People's Chemist and has a book that is uh, a little bit out there and it says like how to stop or the stop eating so effing much diet book. So it's great. I actually had a I did a, a talk at the Iron Strength Kettlebell Gym and one of the ladies approached me with it. Um, just so we could kind of bounce back information and, and see what I thought on the book, and I had not heard of it. And so I've been doing a little bit more research and looking into it, and it's very interesting, very interesting stuff. And so some of the stuff that I got is going to be from them as well. So um, we'll get into these uh, different aspects of hunger. And so to kick off, I think we need to look at what hunger is. And, you know, it's our body's signal to tell us that we need food. More importantly, we probably need those different nutrients and different aspects of the food itself. And, um, you know, science has turned food and eating into some crazy assortment of micronutrients and macronutrients. And, oh, it's protein, it's protein, it's fat, it's fat, no, it's carb. Don't eat the carb. When really, it's so much more than that. It's so complex. And we have just simplified it so much. Um, And, you know, it's this idea that, oh, yeah, it's just a carb. No, it's not. It's food. And there's so much more. And that the word food is a heavy heavy word to use and it's the best way to describe it obviously because that's what it is but uh, I think to call it anything else to call it fuel really minimizes the importance of it so we'll get a little bit deeper here um, but these are the different types of hunger laid out in the book um, the stop eating so if much <laughs> diet book and it goes like this physical hunger hormonal hunger nutritional hunger and learned hunger. So he, he really took it and he broke it down into these four different categories. And why this kind of hit me is because as we go through these, you really understand that, okay, there are such big differences in all of them. Um, and then you can really truly get it, understand it, and then you can know which type of hunger you are feeling at that moment. And you might be able to stop yourself from eating, or you might then look for food uh, or certain kinds of food. So let's get into that. The physical hunger that's when you're truly hungry. I mean, that's that's pretty basic. Uh, your stomach is growling. You know, you are like, man, I haven't eaten in seven hours. Whatever it is, and so physical hunger. You know, it's 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 a uh, 
it's true hunger. Like that is the the essential component. So physical hunger, your body really needs something, uh, and I think that's one that we usually hide behind. And um, you know, we take that and we say, "Hey, look, I'm physically hungry," when really it's one of the other choices. The other choice, or the next choice, would say, is hormonal hunger. And that's pretty much when your hormones are they're not working or you've just grown so insensitive to them that the signals your body is sending that uh, you just feel hungry. Even if you're not, you feel hungry and you can't satiate this appetite because the internal messaging is off. Like I said, either you're not picking up the phone, which is basically being insensitive. The phone just keeps ringing and ringing and ringing and ringing and ringing. You don't pick up. Uh, and so you are just constantly hungry. You just keep eating. You can't stop. And uh, that one can be one of the most detrimental. Um, and in, I know in his book, in his description of it, he talks about it can really lead to mood swings, fatigue, and uh, near des- like constant desire to just eat. It's gluttonous. And he said this is the one that gets people into the most trouble. And it's just that's the internal aspect of it. So physical hunger, yes, your body really needs food. It tells you, here it is, I need it. Hormonal is like your body is almost telling you to stop sometimes and you're like I just can't I can't I'm not hearing that message that says stop so it's just like I'm always on can't turn that off um, nutritional hunger this one is interesting it's when your body is craving nutrients the standard American diet is a sad pathetic one I mean, we eat a lot of processed crap a lot of food that has no real nutrient quality to it it's not dense um, it's just it's like dead food so it's like if I were to eat just a bunch of you know those little peanuts that come in uh packaging like those little white peanuts you just keep eating them they have nothing to them but that's what we eat uh and so our body is craving nutrition and what i mean by that is micronutrients macronutrients any which way antioxidants phytochemicals all of the great stuff that makes up food our body is like please give me something and so all we do is just keep seven more and more of those peanuts into our system and where you think you might be doing yourself a solid just because you're eating you're missing out on all this nutritional information that your body is just craving. Um, and so like I said, if your body is craving nutrients, it, it, it gives off the signal that it's hungry, but you essentially turn to more nutrient void foods um, and your brain is like, eat, eat, eat. And you're like, I am eating. What are you talking about? But you're not eating the right kind of stuff. So this is one of those ideas where it really attacks the um, notion that calories are all important because they're not. A calorie, yes, while it does have its importance from a... Um, you know, nutrition nutritionists, RDs will kind of dig into that a little bit deeper. But um, you know, a calorie has its place. But to say that that is the end all, be all, no, it's not. Quality clearly matters more than quantity, because um, that helps you not only from feeling full, but also helps your body communicate the message that it needs to in order to feel full and basically be healthy and thrive. Versus just like, oh, I took in some calories today. It doesn't work like that. So that's nutritional uh, hunger. And then fourth is learned hunger. And that's a habit. We talk a lot about habits here at Avenue Fitness and on the podcast and uh, on my Periscope videos. Like Habits are huge. And so a learned hunger is an association of hunger. So if you always watch movies with popcorn, every time you're going to go sit down, your brain's like, wait, we haven't had the popcorn yet. You're going to go back and get it. And you associate it there. And so you know, one of these things, um, a, good, a good association I could bring up here is, is athletes. Athletes, they, they need a ton of calories and a lot of nutritional information for their body. So they learn that you know every two hours they have to eat. It just, it just They learn it. They associate, okay, up, two hours are up, boom. Uh, there you go. Most of us are not extreme athletes. You know? So we're not eating like that. We are eating like, oh, it's, you know, it's noon, it's lunchtime. And so it's like Pavlov's dog. As soon as noon hits, we are ready to go. We're ready to eat. We are hungry at that time. So there's an association there, and it's learned. And it's something that we work over time to do and to develop. Um, And so there's the four of them. Physical hunger, hormonal hunger, nutritional hunger, and learned. And so a lot of times we often put that off. Every single one of these off as physical hunger when it's not. Um, And so, you know, you can even throw in emotional if you really wanted to. And, uh... And I actually, if you really want to, I'm not even going to say that. You need to throw in emotional hunger. Um, and so understanding, obviously, but these two traits are two different types of hunger. We're going to compare, for the rest of this podcast, we're going to compare emotional hunger with physical hunger. Because I feel like these are the ones that really, really uh, get us into trouble. Um, and I'll explain why. So, uh, moving forward with this is com- a comparison's sake. And so... 
I'm going to take emotional hunger, and I'm going to take physical hunger, and we're going to work on the two. I'm going to kind of work piece by piece on these different things that can help you understand better, like, am I eating because of a situation, or it's a habit, or am I eating because my body is like, hey, I need to eat. Like, nutritional hunger can almost, in an essence, fall under that category of physical hunger. It's just a different understanding that your body has. Um, but emotional hunger is something that... I explained with that quote earlier from Mother Teresa is we hide and you know we are scared we are upset we are sad we are unhappy depressed whatever it is and we eat because that's the thing we can control that's the thing that has you know it's this relationship that we have with food that makes us feel good maybe it takes us back to a way your grandmother used to cook or your parents or whatever it may be and we fall into that and say hey guess what it makes me feel better I, you know, everything around me might be crumbling, but this plate of cookies, man, that brings me back to a simpler time. And now you won't think of it really like that, but your brain does. So let's let's dive in. Let's get to let's get to it. Um, all right. So from a from a coming on standpoint, like emotional hunger is going to be pretty sudden. It's going to hit you like all of a sudden, man. I wasn't even hungry. All of a sudden, look at me. Um, wow, that's crazy. Physical hunger is gradual. You know, like I said, you get into it like, man, it's been six hours since I've eaten. And I've kind of had that rumble to my stomach. And, you know, your body's giving you these these steadily uh, progressive clues. Like, hey, guess what? Um, I'm a growl here. <laughs> I'm just throwing it out to you. And then over time, maybe those, those growls turn into like that stomach cramp feeling. You're like, oh, okay, I'm really hungry. But like I said emotional hunger is going to be more sudden. Physical hunger is going to be gradual. So take that into consideration. Next thing, that emotional hunger might be linked to a specific food versus, say, physical hunger is open to different foods. And you know, they always get into it. Um, if, you're, if you think you're hungry, would you be hungry enough to eat broccoli or ice cream? You know, and if you're going to eat broccoli, maybe you're physically hungry because you just want, you want food. If you just want, like, if you're like, I'm just hungry for ice cream. Maybe that's one of those keys in your brain that registers says, man, all right, hold up. I'm hungry for this specific food. What's the deal? Is there something going on? Is there a trigger? Is there something around me, some environmental cue that has led me to feel like this? Or am I stressed out? Am I tired? Or am I like, hey, broccoli sounds pretty good because I just need to eat. So, um, you know, looking at it and saying, are you are you being emotional and craving that food, chocolate, pasta, cheeseburger, um, no, yeah, no. So you can't substitute a food in versus physical. You're open to those different foods, uh, and you you have you know you you might have a preference, but you're willing to to just go with what you have available. So next, emotional hunger. It's in the head. It, you know, it's 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 a it's a your mouth and mind. Think of it like that. It breaks it down in those two two, two terms. Versus physical is going to be in the stomach. I mean, that's that, that growl that kicks in, that emptiness. You might even have pain, but your stomach is like, oh, food. You know, but then again, if I'm sitting there, I'm like, man, pizza in my mind sounds really good right now. I feel like if I had pizza, the world would be a better place. Mm. And then, like, you kind of have that taste in your mouth. You're like, oh, pepperoni, hells yes. Um, or donuts from Shipley's or Krispy Kreme. Oh. And you can taste it. Hey, there's you, another cue. Crap, this is emotional. I'm not hungry. All right, all right, fine, next. So think of it like that. Emotional is going to be you know, above the shoulders. It's going to be your mouth and your mind, your taste and your thought process. Whereas physical is going to be in the belly. It's going to be in the belly. So next, emotional hunger, like it urges you to eat now. Like you have to have food at that given moment. And that's a good one. Like, if you're stressed out, you're like, I just have to eat now. I have to, and maybe eating gets you away from the situation. Maybe that's what it is. But emotional hunger tends to really uh, urge you to eat suddenly and immediately and just solve that problem. Physical is patient. You're like, well, I could eat. I could eat now, but maybe I have to put it off for a few minutes. Uh, maybe it's I got to wait till I get home to eat. Yeah, that, that sucks, but I can do that. All right, fine. Um, so it's not commanding you to eat immediately. You would prefer it, but you know what? You can do okay with it or without it, and you'll move on. So emotional hunger is urgent, immediate. Physical hunger is going to be a little bit more patient. It's going to give you a little bit of time. You're still going to be hungry, but 
it's going to give you a bit more time. Emotional hunger is, you can pair that with an upsetting emotion. Your kid's in trouble at school. Your kid is sick. Maybe it's like your your spouse, your husband or your wife is in a bad mood. Maybe they said something they didn't, you know, they were just angry and it took it out on you. Maybe your boss is mad at you at work. You just, you, you didn't do something. Um, that emotional hunger occurs in conjunction with that situation. So you can really look back. If you, if you are intentional, we use that word a lot on the podcast, the Periscope, and here at work. If you are intentional with your, you know, taking that step back every time you feel hungry just to look it is a quick thing but hey did something happen am i am i cool did i get in trouble or am i just upset about a situation what is it because then you can you can find what that pairing that association is and say okay well no that's just an emotional hunger i don't need to eat physical hunger occurs out of physical need i mean like it just basically comes down to the point it's been four or five six hours since you've eaten that's pretty basic it's very basic essential stuff um and then you kind of get that lightheadedness that feeling of like oh okay your energy kind of wanes a little bit and you, you're really struggling but there wasn't some emotional thing that happened now granted those two can in you know intersect you can have had maybe something earlier in the day happen and it's followed you throughout the day but you could still be physically hungry i mean those two can go together just understand did one lead to the other, or were they two separate events? Are they mutually exclusive or not? Think of it like that. Emotional eating, it involves an automatic or absent-minded style of eating. You know, it's, uh, you, you don't really attach your own mind into it. It feels like, you know, someone else filled my bowl with ice cream, or, you know, it's, I didn't do that. What happened? Or you're sitting there watching, you know, you, you're I don't know, not necessarily watching TV because that's just absent-minded, but if if something happened and you're just so stressed out, you're upset, and you just notice that you just ate the whole bag of goldfish, and you're like, wait a minute, what happened? Wait, how did I get to Z? I thought, what happened to A, B, and C? I forgot all these other pieces. That can be emotional eating. It just feels like you're not doing it or you don't even realize you're doing it. Physical hunger? You know what's going down. You're tasting your food. You are being intent with every step of that process. You're like, man, I'm cutting up this steak. Ooh, can't wait to eat this steak. Oh, here we go, putting the fork in. I mean, like, it's step by step. It doesn't happen where, like, all of a sudden you're like, crap, I ate the whole steak? No, 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 you, you know what's going on. You know. So you are being deliberate. You are being aware. Versus apps or versus uh, emotional eating, excuse me, or emotional hunger, you don't know. You, you're not present. Not present at all. So think of that. And then the last one we're going to talk about is that, or no, no, excuse me, not last one. I got two more to go through. Um, emotional eating or emotional hunger does not notice or stop eating in response to fullness. You may be full. You may feel like, man, but you know what? You're trying to deaden that emotional aspect that you have going on, something that's on your mind. You just want to kill it and just be like, oh, I just, I'm just tired of this. And you're crying, you're upset, you're eating, and you don't care if you're full. But physical hunger, when you're full, you're done. You're gonna, you can step away from the table. You can only have that one plate and feel good about it. So break it down like that. I mean, like, are you full and you keep eating? Or are you like, no, nah, I'm done, man. I'm stepping away from the table. The world is a good place to be. And now, last. Emotional hunger tends to have an association with feeling guilty about eating. And... That tends to be because either you didn't, you know, you're not present in the moment. You ate that whole bag of cookies, and at the very end of it, you're like, oh, I just really wish I hadn't have done that. And you beat yourself up, and you know, you had eaten, and ironically, you had eaten to feel better or to just, you know, hide. And then at the very end of it, you feel worse because you did that. And then you you promise like, all right, I, I won't do that again. I will be, I'll be better. I'll be better. I'll be better for me. And then it's just like you. You can't beat yourself up for being absent. And that's weird. It's like you, you said, you hide and you beat yourself up because it happened. And you, know, you can't do that. Um, so you, emotional hunger has that association with feeling guilty about eating. On the other side of it, physical hunger, physical hunger realizes that food is a, ne- a necessary component of life. Like when you are intent and that intent is based in, all right, I, I have physical hunger. You don't have guilt. You don't have the shame. You don't have the beating yourself up at the very end of it all because you feel okay. Like it's 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 a it's a thing you do. Just like you pee, you sleep, 
whatever it is, it's just a physical part of life. There's no anger. There's no guilt. There's no shame. You realize it's like breathing. That's a good one. Breathing oxygen. You have to do it, just like you have to eat. So keep that in mind. Now, the cool thing about all this stuff is, is like you can really understand it just by taking a, uh, that time to be intent. Another time we're going to use that word, and focusing on how it is you're hungry, or why you're hungry. So we're going we're gonna to walk through these one more time. Just really, I'm going to hit you with the quick deals. If you want to write them down, if you want to take notes, you are more than welcome to do it. Please do, actually. So here, here is everything for emotional hunger. Emotional hunger is sudden. It's quick. It hits you. You know, one minute you're, you're, you haven't thought about food all day, and the next you are just famished, starving. Physical hunger is gradual. It takes time, you know takes that time it's a, it's steadily progressive number two emotional hunger is for that specific food ice cream goldfish your grandmother's famous cookies you know it, it's uh, no substitute will do it is that one food physical hunger you're open to different foods you're willing to, to you know I don't have that food at this, this given time you know what but there's a backup I have and I'll be fine with that number three emotional hunger is above the shoulders it's in your mind and it's in your mouth, meaning you can taste the food as you think about it. Physical hunger is in your belly. It rumbles. It sends that message. And it's like, oh, here we go. Number four. Emotional hunger wants you to eat now. It's like, just give me this food now, now, now. And that's to ease up whatever emotional pain or emotional feeling you have at that time. Versus that physical hunger is patient. It would, it would, you know, it's... The preference is that if you eat soon, that'd be great, but I'm okay. We can hold off until we get home. We can, whatever that may be, it's going to be a little bit more patient. Number five, emotional hunger, it has that association with an upsetting emotion, sadness, anger, whatever it is, something happened at work. Boom. And number five, for physical hunger, it occurs out of just a physical need. There's no emotion. There's no instance that happened. Now, Grant, like I said earlier, they can overlap. Something could have happened earlier in the day, and it's lasted with you mentally and stayed with you, and you could be physically hungry. Those two can occur and have that crossover. So just keep that in mind with those. Number six, emotional hunger involves that automatic or absent-minded eating. You don't realize you're doing it. You're not present. You're not there. You're not mindful. Another good word. On the physical hunger side of it, you're deliberate, and the choices you made are deliberate, and you are aware that you ate. Like I used that steak reference. You know you're eating the steak every step of it versus, oh, holy crap, that's gone. Number seven, emotional hunger does not notice or stop eating even if you're full or especially when you're full. Physical hunger, you stop when you're full because you've met that need. And then last, emotional hunger, it feels guilty about eating as opposed to physical hunger that realizes eating is as necessary as breathing, as sleeping, as peeing. So hopefully that helps you understand things. And that hope, I hope that helps you understand that like it's not easy to just say eat less because you have to realize there's so much surrounding you, whether it is emotional, whether it is, like going back to the very beginning, hormonal or nutritional, or if it's a learned association. Just saying eat less doesn't bring into the whole psychological factor of hunger. So don't beat yourself up. Don't be so negative in these times that maybe you, maybe you did overeat. Maybe you did tap out mentally and knock out a bag of cookies. It happens. Everybody freaking does it. But it helps you gain another step, another clue to say, okay, this is what I, can have, I could have done, and this is what I can do differently next time. I'll take that step back. I'll be intent. I'll understand what I'm doing, how I'm doing it, and I'll take that step to understand what hunger is. There are way too many factors that can push you to eat. Even like the back, like the nutritional one we talked about, you can even go deeper with that and say like the gut bacteria, whatever, however you've cultured those bacteria, whether feed them a bunch of sugar and crap or good hearty broth filled foods, um, nutritionally dense foods, traditional type cooked foods that foster great healthy fla- uh, fauna in that gut, they can lead you to different foods because they crave different things. That's another aspect of the nutritional component. But I, I just, I'm just trying to help you guys out to understand that 
There's a lot going on when it comes to hunger, being hungry. We even confuse hunger with um, thirst, like our thirst with hunger. If we're thirsty, dehydrated, and most Americans chronically are, we just turn to food, like, oh, sweet food. And we just eat another nutritionally dead thing that has no water. It's a cracker. Like, oh, great, cool. You don't go for the water. So understand that you can be physically hungry, you can be emotionally hungry, and there's different circumstances surrounding each of them. But ultimately, take the time to be intentional with your food, and I guarantee you, you will have that clear understanding of why you're hungry, and you can move forward and you can progress instead of just being afraid to eat, afraid of food, because I I tell people when I do talks that food is the longest relationship you'll ever have. I guarantee it. You've eaten since day one, you'll eat to the last day. I promise. I know there's a lot of companies out there trying to create that pill for food. No, it's not going to happen. Uh, well, it probably will, like in a long time. But for now, it's just look at it and say, food is a beautiful thing and it should be enjoyed and you should not fear it and you shouldn't be afraid. So hopefully that helps. I hope you get a better, clear understanding of emotional hunger versus physical hunger, and then in turn, you can then make a better informed decision of should I eat or can I hold off? So that was the goal today. Um, so this is episode 13. Thank you guys so much. So much. I um, am very thankful. Last week, we're trying to get a, a episode out. Technical difficulties couldn't, but this week brought this to you because... It was uh, something I thought was really necessary, especially come holiday time. Thanksgiving, we're past that. I'm getting t- closer to Christmas holiday parties when we're going to be standing next to the plate of cookies. There's going to be alcohol all around us if you're of age. Um, and there's going to be a number of factors that are going to lead to how you eat or why you eat. So I really wanted you guys to, to hear this one out and just know that there are all these factors surrounding hunger and that you can take control of it. And you can understand the choices you're going to make. So um, that is all I have for you today. If you have any questions, if you want to uh, get in touch with me, you can find me at ben at avenuefit.com. You can also find our website, avenuefit.com, A-V-E-N-U-F-I-T, fit.com. And uh, you can find us there. We have more videos. We have some other tips, blogs, all, all kinds of cool stuff. You can also, what I would appreciate is if you could go onto iTunes and Stitcher, however you're finding this, and leave, you know, if you liked it, let us know. If you have another question, let us know. Give us a review, feedback. We're trying to make this podcast something that's going to help so many people, and we can help pass this message of uh, a better understanding of self and and gaining something every single day and uh, really want people to improve their lives. And I know we can do it. We just need your help. So feedback would be fantastic. Sharing it with a friend, sharing it with someone who needs it, um, that'd be awesome. So in turn, excuse me. In turn, um, I thank you guys a lot, and I can't wait to bring you next week's episode. Uh, and I will see you, or well, technically not see you, but I will. Uh, we'll be back on air next week, so you can give us a listen. Thank you guys for your time, and have a great day.